second season of Let's Get Candid. I'm your host, Shandri Gandhi from Unbound B2B. You may hear a lot about growth marketing all around the industry, especially during this unconventional time when you never know what your business has to tackle the next. In this time, the one who win the race and sustain in the market are those marketers and the sales people who work on a growth marketing mindset. Now, when we are talking about growth marketing, it's not only limited to growth marketing manager or sales people. It's about entire organization, people, platform and especially the process. To dig more into this, today we have Joseph Rees. He's co-founder and managing partner at Honeygo and he's also the host of the Sales Nation podcast. Please continue to the main video. Right. So, so, you know, for starters, I would love to know about your entire journey of B2B industry that how did you, you know, came up with the idea of Honeycomb, Sales Nation, the community building and what was the entire story was like for you? What was your perspective about it? Like, how much time you got? Because that's that's a long journey um, and it has been a <laughs> So, so originally I, I started out in, in marketing mm-hmm. um, and even before that I started my own uh, businesses at the early age right. of 15, 16 years of age, oh. went into the music business a little bit, mm-hmm. uh, more underground uh, alternative rock and, and metal uh, and building businesses there and then, then I went into um, the startup world and, and the right. corporate world right. more on the e-commerce side, the marketing mm-hmm. side and then basically slid into uh, into sales. Mm-hmm. Um, and and yes. that's where I found that something just doesn't add up. Uh, something wasn't clicking for me the way sales was done back uh, back in the day and even today um, right. a lot right. of times. Um, and I found that it's just such a shame that that just a few uh, mm-hmm. sales leaders and sales reps really have you know experience with sure. with marketing. Sure. And mm-hmm. vice versa. So there's 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 a gap there, mm-hmm. um, and and I was in the fortunate position to you know having done both, mm-hmm. um, and and that was that was that was kind of the initial Funny spark, point. right? Uh, for the, for the crusade or, or for the journey that uh, that I have been on right now, right. Um, by simply just doing the sales education as we do right mm-hmm. now with with yeah. Sales Nation and and Honeycomb. Right. I think sales education, which is necessary for everyone who is associated in B2B business, either as product marketer, growth marketer, or demand generation managers, anyone, because these are the people who are dealing with the customer or consumer in the end. So, you know, that education is very, very important and necessary. A perfect B2B salesman can become an excellent marketer, but it would be hard for a, it would be hard for a marketer to become an excellent sales. Actually, they will, but it will take time. I guess. I, I think you're right. I think it's education is really the, yes. the foundation of everything. Mm, true. Um, and, and I've seen and I've gone uh, myself, mm. I've gone through a lot of sales training and, and mm. I've just simply saw that mm. training is not enough because most of the time a training is just a one off. You have right. a day, you, maybe mm. you have two or, or a weekend mm. where you just bombard salespeople and, and sales leadership, mm. sales management. Mm with so much information, mm. uh, but, but you know, the majority of that knowledge mm. is just gone after 90 days. So, so and that was proven by, by Forbes uh, mm. through, through data. So we forget mm. very, very quickly. Yeah. And when we started this journey with, uh, with Honeycomb and, and Sales mm. Nation, mm. we basically are um, under, uh, under a company that, that is in the educational space. Right. And that was kind of the, the spark for us, mm-hmm. the trigger that said, yeah, that's mm-hmm. really what we need. That's really what sales needs. It's mm-hmm. education rather than training. Yes. The, the consistent mm-hmm. um, pursuit of right. reskilling and upskilling and learning new mm-hmm. skills and applying new skills. That's really what it is. Right. And, and you go to school mm-hmm. um, to, to learn over a certain period of, di- of mm-hmm. time. It can be three months, six months or 12 months mm-hmm. uh, time. Mm-hmm. But then you apply it every day. Mm. You get feedback every day. You get input every day, right. um, over yeah. consistently over over a, a longer period of time. So that's why we we love to to do what we do in terms of sales education, 
right. as opposed to just one of sales trainings. Right, right, right. So what do you think, like, you know, looking to the current scenario of the sales people, what do you think, you know, is there any room of improvement or what are your thoughts on basically current scenario of the sales people, the way they are dealing with the consumers or, or, or about the entire process? Well, I think there's always room for improvement. Right. Um, I think what, what a lot of sales organizations, mm -hmm. um, what's holding them back um, is really to, to kind of look outside the box mm -hmm. and, and yeah. see what's on the other side. Mm -hmm. um, and that has to do with that, that gap there, that is there between sales and marketing and, and, and also mm -hmm. um, other areas of the business. Mm -hmm. So when we come into a business, we, mm -hmm. we try to break down as many walls as possible mm -hmm. and, and to just equalize the knowledge that is there in, in the business and, and to just transfer that knowledge. Because right. eventually a sales organization grows mm -hmm. um, and, and can grow effectively if they know all the bits and pieces of, of the whole puzzle, meaning right. marketing, right. customer service, mm -hmm. strategy-wise, what, what, mm -hmm. what does uh, the C-level uh, want in, in the short term and long term? So I think there's a huge potential there mm -hmm. um, in sales but also in marketing to learn from each other, right. to support each other mm -hmm. and to just ask questions instead of, mm -hmm. you know, I've, I've been in the corporate world and, and, and mm -hmm. I saw that sales and marketing is always like hats yes. off, always like friction, always like, you know, yeah. we don't, we hate these guys. We don't like these guys. Right. Why don't we get better leads? And, and marketing was like, yeah, why don't they close our leads? Right. It, it's all about that being, being open mm -hmm. for new experiences and, for the greater good of, of the mm. business, right? Mm. That, and I see great potential there and more and more, especially young sales leaders yes. and sales managers, mm. they, they really feel that, you know, there's something oh. missing there that right. we can dive into very deeply. Hmm. Okay. So, um, you know, there is a book by Nelson Gillett. I, I saw one of the episode on Sales Nation and he was guest. He was also guest on Let's Get Candid. So uh, his book, Death of STR and Birth of Buyer Centric Revenue Model. Right. And I think uh, the new buyer centric revenue model, you know, the process from start to finish, a single person handle, you know, handle the entire process. So the consumer don't have to, you know, ship, uh, ship to different people as well. So what are your thoughts on it? Do, what, what model do you support a buyer centric model uh, you know where the consumer is in the center process uh, in the center or you know an str model a, a traditional sales model well i had nelson on on our sales nation podcast yes. just just two weeks ago or one, one and a half weeks ago and we had a very uh interesting very long conversation about just that it was longer than we anticipated we <laughs> just you know, kind of uh went on with it um i do support uh, in sales in general, mm -hmm. everything that fundamentally has the mm -hmm. buyer mm -hmm. at the heart of everything. Right, definitely. Because we've seen what happens when sales organizations act seller-centric and vendor-centric mm -hmm. and sales-centric. That has worked mm -hmm. for a long time, um, but the, the buyer uh, has grown so much in terms right. of independence yes in terms of th the access yeah. to information that they mm. need to make a purchase decision mm. they don't need sales as much as they did 10 20 years ago no. where there wasn't you know there, there mm -hmm. was no um social media there was no connectivity at that point and exactly. also Buyers have lot, you know, lots of options out there. If you know they are not happy with one of the services, they can jump to another company. So it's right now that the company we have to give our buyers the best if we want to have that customer retention. If we want our you know long term plans with the customers, so I think it has to be buyer centric revenue model any day for the customers because in the end, consumer is our king. So we have to be according to our kings. And and if you think about it, um. 
I mean, we're in the B2B space. Yes. We, we do sales education for B2B, mm. but, but you can transfer that to B2C. And mm. if you think about it, the, you know, classic example is, is Amazon. I'm, I'm yes. a prime customer. I yes. pay my seven quid a month. I have it delivered the next day. Mm-hmm. I don't need to ask anyone for, for pricing or for mm-hmm. a demo or book a demo here, mm-hmm. book, get in touch with sales. I, I don't want that as a consumer, right. as a buyer. I just want to scroll through the description, through the reviews, social mm-hmm. proof, peer proof, and then just order it. And, and the data has shown over the past five to seven years that, that buyers are so independent right now that, that right peer reviews mm. weigh much more than, than a call from sales. And, and buyers avoid talking to sales like the plan. True, true, true. Yeah, just don't call me. Don't yeah. call me. Give me a free trial. Give me the pricing. Give me the terms. Give me the knowledge of how long does it mm. take to install it, to, mm. you know, what's the cost For of the process. And so on. And I think the... the um, the role of sales mm. now has shifted from being a salesman, mm. a woman, a salesperson, right. to a trusted advisor and consultant. Mm. And the first thing that, that I always ask when we go into businesses and, and go into sales organization, I always ask, when was the last time you honestly said to one of your prospects, we're not the right guys for you? You should rather give XYZ right. a trial. Because that puts you in a position where you are, as as sales, Mm. you're untouchable because you tell them, we're not the best fit for you. Have you really thought about X, Y, Z? And Mm. asking these these, um, probing questions, the thought and and, and Mm. critical thinking um, uh, revealing questions. Mm. And I think once you are in that neutral space mm. of yes mm. you, you could go with our solution mm. absolutely and i would be happy to sell sell it to you but if you move yourself on the other side mm. in the long run mm. the impact is so incredible the impact on your on your brand reputation mm. on on the retention rate of customers customer mm. satisfaction uh, word of mouth mm. so this is so big once you shift to mm. a biocentric model as as nelson uh promotes as, as we yes. promote and i promote as well so um you're absolutely spot on with that and, and nelson is spot on with that as well it's the, the buyer has to be mm-hmm. in the center and at the heart of everything because otherwise they just go to somewhere else and buy something else right. they, don't need, they don't need sales true 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 it's like you have to be honest with your buyers because um, in the long run, if you are not fit for that, you know, particular what buyer is aiming, then you will have that, you know, love and hate kind of relationship with them. You definitely don't want to have that kind of bad mouth for your company or anything like that. So just be honest on the front side that, you know, uh, this is the XYZ company that we recommend to you. And I think you should go for it. That's the best fit for you. And it's going to make a profit or, you know, it's going to, you know, help you a lot than uh, rather than us guys. Yeah, and, and that's, you know, that's a, that's a, a wink to, to sales management and sales leadership. Mm-hmm. The way sales people act that way is, is because they are being pressured by toxic vanity KPIs, mm-hmm. by, by, by vendor centric mm-hmm. um, metrics. And so they, they don't really have any chance but to right. act the way that they have been acting for, for 20, 30 years. Mm-hmm. So it's really about leadership management Mm. to think about how can we open up and and free up the thought process the the attitude of our Mm. salespeople by by getting rid of toxic kpis Mm. not all at once you know it it takes time to to shift a sales organization but you can do it incrementally you can do it step Mm. by step right You, you just pick one, two, or three people in your sales team Mm. who have that open mind, who Mm. who are uh, accustomed to LinkedIn, who who know their way around um, buyers and have that open minds and an open attitude, and then just relieve the KPIs, relieve the pressure off of them, um, and then train them and and reskill them on having conversations differently and asking different questions that that they've never asked before um, and it, this goes out to sales and leadership so so it needs 
change from, from uh, top down. And then you have the greatest chances to really stand out as, and that can be your value proposition, your USP mm-hmm. um, in the market when buyers actually love to talk to your sales team. Right. And, and right. really like that conversation hmm. and that honesty and transparency. Right. I think when you are, you know, not push, you know, put under so much of pressure or, you know, meeting your KPIs or, you know, data and everything, if you're not in the pressure, a person can perform beautifully out there, you know, because he knows that what he's doing is the best. And, he, you know, without KPIs, if he, he or the he or she it can go beyond that point as well if that person is not under the pressure or not under the toxic work culture of where majority of b2b sales people are i guess yeah yeah and and it's a shift i mean you don't get rid of hmm. kpi um, yes. in general you hmm. just change kpis to to what makes sense in in hmm. a bias sales organization in a buyer centric uh, conversation flow buyer centric outcomes so hmm. so you don't uh, break away from KPIs in general, you just change and exchange the KPIs yes. um, with, with KPIs that, that really produce mm. um, outcome mm. as opposed to output only. Right. I've, 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 you know, I've been in, in sales organizations where, you know, they have to make, I don't know, 50 calls a day, 100 oh. calls a day. Um, you know, that's like, that's the 1980s over and over again. So, so, mm you know and we've run these experiments we we you know mm. we do produce our own data we look at uh we look at gardner we look at mm. at, at uh, uh forbes and and you know whatever is out there and we know that buyer behavior has changed mm. and sales organizations who adapt to that change and map how they sell to how buyers prefer to buy that's that's the that's a unique uh, selling point right there. That's the competitive edge that they want. Basically, you have to be consumer in the end, and you have to see according to the consumer's perspective. Do you like it? Do you like to be on the cold call, or do you like to be on the call with the salesperson? If no, then please change the method. It's about perspective, I guess. Like perspective of not uh, you know that you are selling your product, but pers- perspective of a you know consumer that if you are on the consumer side, will you do this or not? And if not, then change it, please. Likewise. That, that's, that's, that's so hilarious that mm-hmm. uh, a lot of sales leaders refuse mm-hmm. to buy the way they pressure their team to sell. Right. So, and we've seen that. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, Amazon is the classical example. I'm not being uh, sponsored by Amazon, but I just love it as an example. You know, you, you just, you have your app on your phone, you buy mm-hmm. and the next day you get it. Um, And and if Amazon started selling differently Mm. than how consumers prefer to buy, Mm. um, that wouldn't work Mm. because now Amazon sells the way uh, consumers want to buy and want to share. And and you can take that from B to C to B to B quite easily. You, you just oh. ask the buyers, right? Don't don't turn it into an interview, into an, an investigation right. about you know, is is the that question. a qualified lead or prospect or not. One of the first questions you should be asking further down the line is what well, what can we do? How how would you like to buy from us? Hmm. This is just a simple question, uh, and then you'll realize oh there's there's a lot of hoops they have to jump through especially when it's larger corporations with with you know um very complex buying procedures and buying committees and and so forth um and so it's it's so much more to it than to just book a demo and and kind of see that as as a success which it isn't a success is really helping the buyer buy from you and and helping them through their own uh purchasing uh, purchasing cycle and, and and the hoops that they need to jump through. And when you are on the sales side mm. of it and you, you're able to help that buyer through their own process, mm. that's, that's, that's what really stands out. That's yeah. what makes everyone happy. You know, yeah. it's a, I have to talk to the CFO and then the CEO and I don't know. And, and, you know, that, you know, uh, and then you, you come in there as, as the salesperson and say, okay, well, let's do it this way. What do you think? You know, shall we do it this way and that way? Here's, here's a couple of questions you could ask to facilitate mm-hmm. that purchase decision. So there's a lot of things that sales organizations 
can do if they stop focusing on their own sales cycle and mm -hmm. opening up to, to really seeing the buy cycle and the purchase decision-making process on, on the buy side and not just you know, sit back and relax and, and let the buyers do what they want to do and need to do, but really be there mm -hmm. uh, with them and just guiding them through it and, and being there with them. Right, right. I think a uh, majority of the, you know, B2B sales company, what they are looking is for the profit. More the buyers, more the profit, right? When I'm talking about uh, profit, the one thing which again came into my mind is growth marketing, you know, growth hacking. People or marketers out there, salesperson out there, that growth hacking is a way that we can have, you know, buyers around us or we can have our customers. So what do you think about growth hacking and sales? Do they align together? Uh, if you want to boost your sales, do you know? Do you need to have the knowledge of growth marketing or not? Well, I think it, it's we circle back to the misalignment between sales and marketing, and hmm. and actually sales marketing and, and also management and, and the hmm. C suite. Um, if if you push growth in 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 that sense, hmm. then it has nothing to do with just growth marketing because right. everything else has to adapt. If you go from from one million to ten million in revenue, that you have to do more than just marketing, right? You have to prepare um, sales for it. You have to prepare customer service for it. You have to prepare maybe even logistics. Um, you have to prepare the IT infrastructure if you're if you're a SaaS uh, company, for example. So the the scalability of mm -hmm. the organization, but also of the processes inside mm. that organization that that's that's very important so, right. so growth right. marketing you know there's this is absolutely love it and and there's some great minds out there um but you need to have the overall strategy in place mm. right and and if you start small mm. and the process is not right then mm. then you scale mm. on something mm. that is not working mm. and then you blow it up you make it bigger and it's still not working mm -hmm. so you have to make sure that before you grow exponentially mm -hmm. um everything needs to work mm -hmm. you know like you know like 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 clockwork right and then of course you can implement mm -hmm. um growth marketing right. uh, you can implement sales strategies mm -hmm. uh, that that accompany mm -hmm. uh, these strategies um, and then it makes sense Okay, so do you think, uh, you know, growth marketing is a big bet or a buzzword? Because growth marketing is currently the trend. So what are your opinions on either of this? Um, it depends on the execution. Okay. I mean, everything, everything, everything is, is, is a buzzword, right? There's a, we're moving in cycles. The demand generation uh, is a buzzword. Uh, yeah. Lead generation was a buzzword. Hmm. It's all about the execution. Hmm. And I don't mind any new thing appearing in, in mm. the sales and marketing field, I, I just give it a try mm. um, and, and see if there's something to it, if it's scalable, if it's applicable in right. the day-to-day -day business. So I, I don't perceive it as, as good or bad. I think as long as the, the foundation is there, mm. you can accelerate growth mm -hmm. uh, to a certain degree with, with certain strategies. Mm. Again, if you have the the structure in place mm -hmm. um so for me i don't care if it's a buzzword or uh, mm -hmm. a legitimate strategy right. as long as it works yeah. and and the data will prove it um mm -hmm. if it works or not right um right. and and yeah so so I'm, I'm all for it you know go growth marketing Right, right. So I think growth marketing is more of a data driven strategy because growth marketing is about SEO, email marketing. You invest a lot in growth marketing. It's nothing happened overnight. You have to develop a strategy and have to see that is it, you know, a scalable thing or not. And then you can invest your time. Then you can invest, you know, uh, put your money into it and then you can expect the ROI out of it. But again, growth marketing or any kind of strategy, either it's demand gen, ABM, it will take time. It will take time to, you know, get the uh, design results so then there is sorry you were saying no you, you're absolutely right you're absolutely right it, it does take time and i mm -hmm. think when when we just rewind a little bit and, mm -hmm. and 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 look at the big picture i think one of the most important questions to ask is why mm 
Right. Why do we want to implement that? Why mm -hmm. do we want growth markets? Why do we want growth? Right. Why do we want to go from, from, from 10 to 100 mm -hmm. in, in 12 months time? Mm -hmm. uh, is it because we have investors and uh, we want to increase the shareholder value? Or is it that we want to do something differently mm -hmm. and, and impact more people? Mm -hmm. So I think the why um, is also important or, mm -hmm. More important than than the execution, hmm. but I think every every business, um, especially a startup, but but also you know if, if you're um, in that growth phase, you have that potential to really go big, right? Because it's never the best solution that sells best or the hmm. best product. It's, it's the best known product, right? That outsells the best product, hmm. which is which is absolutely, um, absolutely incredible. So you don't have to be necessarily the best out there. Mm. You know, you just have to be the best known out Product. there. Right. Um, and there, there are so many, uh, so many people out there in the UK, mm. um, Stephen Bartlett, for, for example, okay. who, who just, you know, went out there, started, he started his, his social media um, mm. marketing agency, winged it you know he speaks openly about it uh you know the, the first first two or three years i just winged it i had no idea what i was doing and i love that and it is just going out there doing the best you can and then really creating your own luck um and and i think and i think that's that's such a great um message mm -hmm. out there that you can scale uh, and you can grow tremendously if you stay true to your values, to your to your ethics. Um, that, that's one big topic for us in, in sales education. How can you mm. how can you do sales in an ethical way mm. uh, and and aligned with um, with your fundamental values? Okay. Um, but it is scalable. It definitely is scalable. So so I'm, I'm really kind of into the nitty gritty things of, of growth marketing and then mm. all the hacks that are out there. Mm. If they are based on a great why, um, good values, mm. um, good ethics. Right. When we are talking about why here, so a company also need to see here is that if growth marketing is working for a company, then it might not work for the B company because the products are different, services are different. It's not like, you know, both the companies are the same. So what's working for a company might not work for the B company. So as you told, the why is very important. First, you need to figure out why you want this strategy or why you don't want this strategy and then go ahead and then invest any amount of money or you know anything in it uh, instead of going you know just because this in trend we our company need to do it that's completely wrong i think so and it's like focus on why if you're clear with your why then go with how when what where and, and that's you're absolutely right growth for growth sakes is is mm -hmm. never good that, that's mm -hmm. that's never the ideal situation mm -hmm. and 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 we also, you know, go back to the buyer centric mm. model. Yes. Um, it's all about the buyer. And, and you talk, you also mentioned the values and um, which I appreciate very much. If, if we think about the new generation coming into the workforce right now mm. um, and coming into management, like the, mm. the millennials, no, the millennials, mm -hmm. um, they, they have a completely different um, set mm. of values. True. And, and how they go about things and why they do things. Mm. So I, I could not en envision and picture in my mind a, a millennial picking up the phone and making a hundred calls a day because that's just not how they operate. That's that's not who they are. Mm. But I can imagine uh, someone in sales of that generation to be absolutely brilliant in um, in social media, in building mm -hmm. relationships, in, in building awareness, mm -hmm. uh, in, in moving forward with, with social selling, um, and so on. So you have to also consider these things in terms of values and, and, and the next generation mm -hmm. of sales and marketing, wow. not only on the vendor side, but also on the buyer side. Right. Because millennials love to buy mm -hmm. in a certain way from um, from companies that they trust, that that have very special values that align with with their own values. So I think that there's a great change and and shift that we are witnessing um, as we speak right now. A very exciting one.
Right. I think when you talk about millennials and, you know, we have to be according to or we have to change the companies have to change according to the uh, time because the buyers and, uh, you know, salespersons both are changing. The best example here is Amazon, as you said, you know, because I, I remember whoever is around my circle or whoever are millennials, they, you know, 60 percent of them are so loyal to Amazon because that's, you know, they are giving a 360 degree service. We want in short time, we want, we, you know, with the cost effective manner, we don't want to talk with any salesperson and everything. So Amazon is the best example of B2C. And I think it can be same implemented in B2B because millennials don't like to cold calls or anything like that, but they want everything in textual form. So why not go ahead with that and be consumer friendly? Uh, you're absolutely right. And, and we've also seen the data on that, that yeah. the B2B buyers right now once they get in touch with mm. sales to, mm. to validate their decision, mm. let's say they, they broke it down to three or four vendors mm. and then they get in touch with, with sales to validate mm. uh, that and their decision. They are all, you know, already 80, 85% through their purchasing right. journey. Right. Their buying. Mm. So they, they made the decision already. Mm. Um, they, they are completely aware of what's out there on the market Mm -hmm. They they listen to their peers. They ask their peers, mm -hmm. um, and and that's how they make decisions. So I I think that that also plays a role in how sales right. as an organization mm -hmm. and as a strategy needs to adapt and mm -hmm. and change to mm -hmm. that to that buying behavior. And and you're absolutely right. I think we can learn from from Amazon in terms mm -hmm. of how how they really added so much convenience mm -hmm. to the process. Mm -hmm. and, absolutely superior sure. um, customer service as well mm. if i have a problem with with amazon i, I mm. just pick up the phone or, or do this little chat thing and, and right. they call like 30 seconds mm. later um or i i need a refund or anything like mm. that um, there's no questions asked it's like yeah we, we're very sorry about that and we'll refund you there's mm. no questions asked did you break it or, or did you know what was wrong with it now it's just get a refund. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that level of convenience and value mm -hmm. that they add to the consumer slash the buyer, mm -hmm. that is what B2B can just, they should steal it. You know, B2B mm -hmm. must steal everything that, that <laughs> helps them uh, uh, create mm -hmm. um, very happy buyers in the long term. Right, right, right. You uh, mentioned a word convenience. Okay. So I want to ask a question, which is not regarding the topic, but it's my favorite question to ask to every influencer out there. So uh, there is a piece of content which is available in 60 seconds. And there is a piece of content which is available in one hour of video. Convenience as in, uh, you know, uh, whenever we go, go through long form of content, either it is article, either it is a video or anything like that. So what are you really big fan of convenience or the long form of content? if the topic is of your interest um i i wouldn't i wouldn't pick uh, i i would not pick i would say give me everything that i need uh, mm -hmm. and give it to me in any shape or form mm -hmm. um and i'll tell you why um i love to read mm -hmm. that's like my 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 go-to mm -hmm. format i really right. love to read Mm. Um, then I love to watch videos. Mm. So YouTube is the second place where, where I go um, or uh, podcasts. Mm. That's, that's like on, 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 you know, top three of <laughs> my list of priority list. But whenever I um, research things mm. that we need in our business and evaluate mm. tools or software or, or whatever it is, um, I go on LinkedIn Mm. Um, I search on Google, I search on YouTube, um, mm. I go to their blog, mm. uh, see what they're talking about. I go to their landing pages, their websites, and just consume that, um, that content. So, so the written uh, content, it can be long form, it is absolutely fine with, with right. that. I even go into the, you know, the FAQ and the help section, the support section, where you can ask questions or, or questions um, are being answered to just understand how a tool works, what, what, you know, what it does to me, to the business and what value we get out of it. Um, but basically it's, it's, we, we now live in a time where there is an abundance of opportunities mm -hmm. and, and you can, uh, you, you can, you really don't know where B2B 
B2B buyers oh, hear oh, from yeah, you yeah. Or, or see you? It, it can even be TikTok. It can be Instagram. Yes. It can be Facebook. It can be LinkedIn. Mm. We don't know yet. That's that's what um, um, that's what's called the the, the dark social. Um, we don't know. Mm. So mm. just just go with it. and it's and it's so easy. I mean, the, the content strategy is so easy. Just produce mm. a long form. Mm. content like you produce now with that podcast right. you can mm. transcribe it then and turn mm. it into a, a blog post right. uh, you can uh, create uh, in the order YouTube video podcast yeah. and then micro snippets mm. on linkedin right. mm. like one minute or 30 seconds something like that mm. because you don't know you you don't get to pick and choose where your potential buyers will True. see you True. again that's biocentricity mm, right i think the best example is tiktok as b2b selling or b2b buyers are moving on tiktok because of the millennial generation as well because we are you know we are present on every social media so you never know where your bias is coming from you just have to be only you just have to have an omni channel approach out there because you don't want to take a chance because if you are not selling that the other company will sell that so you better go with all the platforms out there in all the forms text, uh, you know, the transcript of this particular interview, audio format, or the video format, you just have to out there with an app only channel approach. Yeah, and you never know. I mean, you know, sometimes the buyer is in a mood to to consume a podcast. And okay. sometimes he's in a mood to watch some some TikTok stuff. Mm. And sometimes they're in a mood to just read. Mm. You don't know. And and, and it's, it's, you know, you don't get to tell how they consume. It's just they, they consume the way they find it convenient just, yes convenient true yeah right so again coming back to our uh, you know growth marketing and sales so what are the hacks that you would suggest to the sales people to you know for the uh, growth hacking to boost the sales what are the hacks you would suggest um that that's an interesting question i think one of the one of the things that that you can do um is to really break down the walls between sales and marketing right to let the communication flow mm -hmm. and and to just have it's, it's like when you have kind of a quarrel in your relationship it's not versus you, it's always together yeah yeah you, you just sit down and say listen you know what's going on here mm -hmm. so what do we need to know about you guys and and what do you need to mm -hmm. know about us and and by the way, that, that goes both ways. I, you mm. know, I've seen marketing departments where none of them, uh, a team of seven, uh, had talked to, to a customer before live. Oh. Uh, and so, but sales did. Mm. And so that's kind of the, the, the information that needs to flow back and forth. Mm. Because how should marketing implement these growth hacks mm. in terms of demand generation, in terms of mm. social, in terms of whatever it is? Yeah. Um, if if they do it, if, if if they do it, not targeted specifically mm. to their audience to their potential buyers, mm. then it's just it doesn't work. Right, uh, and they need sales for that. They need the mm. information from sales, and that mm. needs to flow. And on the other side, uh, sales needs to understand what marketing is doing, mm. and and how they how marketing can do the job so that sales receives leads that mm -hmm. come with a high buy intent right because nothing worse than than wasting sales time with leads that have no intention to buy or have just downloaded an ebook and is just browsing right. there's there's just wasted resources and wasted time and wasted mm -hmm. budget right so the, the biggest growth hack mm -hmm. um is is for sales to to move away from traditional sales the old school sales like pick up the phone, make 50 cold calls or, or outreach, cold mm -hmm. outreach, unsolicited emails, uh, and so on. Uh, that's number one, steer away from that. Um, number two is to change the way you design conversations. That, mm -hmm. That's what we do. That, that's, you know, our, where we sit. Mm -hmm. um, because once you change the way you have conversations, you can change the outcome. Mm -hmm of that uh, conversation mm -hmm. and you can change it drastically and increase the con conversion and, and the closing rate drastically. Um, and then on the other side, um, point number three or four, I think, um, is really to break down any walls that, that 
keep departments isolated mm -hmm. and that includes that includes management that includes mm -hmm. leadership because they can learn so much from mm -hmm. from the people uh, in sales from the sales reps from from the marketing assistant mm -hmm. because they have so much insight mm -hmm. um, and they can drip feed that upwards as well right. for management and then to to kind of tweak Mm. The, the overall strategy right. and it's all for for the greater good and for, for the benefit of of the overall business definitely i think one of the major problem that have been faced by both the you know sales and marketing team is sales will say uh, you you know what listen marketing team we are not getting the leads that we are looking for okay he just downloaded an ebook he's not even qualified the iql thing and you have sent it as guy and the MQL will say, listen, we have already sent it, which are in the buying, you know, in the pipeline, which are at the bottom of the funnel. So there is this one quarrel. And I've also created one video on that the rule handover, the rules for lead handover process from MQL to SQL, which is a must video, you know, to look at it for both the for both marketing and, and sales as well. Because in the end, it's like a win-win situation. If you are aligned together, the company will boost and even your work would be get enhanced instead of blaming each other. Yeah. And, and once marketing gets the best understanding mm. about the customer, about the potential buyer, mm. they can tweak their marketing mm. and, and get much higher qualified and better qualified right. prospect needs in mm. there. But that also means that sales will have fewer conversations. Mm. So again, if, if you put on top a traditional KPI mm. of you that have to not have really work. Uh, it doesn't work right so you have you will have fewer conversations mm -hmm. and then you need the knowledge to to uh turn these conversations into a successful outcome um so but it helps that marketing understands how to pre-qualify right. way more mm -hmm. than they are right. doing right now because mm -hmm. i'd rather have a salesperson or my sales team talk to um 50 less mm -hmm of 50% fewer prospects, but the closing rate and the conversion rate goes up by 50 or 60 or 70%. Mm -hmm. And the retention rate goes up mm -hmm. and the, the average um, transaction value goes up. Um, the, the, the upselling goes up. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's all the, 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 the screws that, that you can turn mm -hmm. once you free the organization's from traditional approaches yeah, right to biocentric model yeah mm -hmm. definitely i think uh, entire methodology has to be changed with sales marketing and with the higher management it's like a you know three important holy trinity of it the higher management marketing and sales if the three are uh, you know aligned very well then you don't have to worry about your kpis and you just have to you know focus on your work and with the proper alignment and everything yeah absolutely absolutely okay. couldn't have said it better <laughs> yes coming back to the last question of growth marketing and sales that you know if there is a you know downfall with the sales for an example a lead generation company is not performing well with the you know sales thing how growth marketing can help you know to overcome that downfall and to overcome that entire uh, scenario well i think i think it's it, the question is what was the purpose of that campaign uh, yes. If you say lead generation campaign, mm -hmm. you know, why did we do that campaign? Was it mm -hmm. just to fill our funnel with mm -hmm. whatever leads uh, or uh, we don't care about the quality as long as, you know, we, we get 50 leads a day. We're, we're happy, clappy, which is which is a very bad strategy, by the way. <laughs> um, or is it that that the, the number of of very well qualified mm -hmm and prospects hmm. um, goes down right. and it's always a case of the back end has to work seamlessly together with the front end hmm. uh, and the back end being sales and the front end being marketing right that's what you see out there the marketing hmm. then sales in the back end takes over and have has has these conversations um, if, if a campaign is not running most of the time it's the people in that campaign do not talk to the right audience mm. or they have the wrong message mm. or number three 
all of it, right? The yeah. wrong message to the wrong people. Everything. Yeah. I mean, that's that, that that's what can go wrong. You have the wrong right. message, uh, you have the wrong target audience, or mm. you have both. Uh, and that's the worst case scenario. Oh. So the, the understanding of mm. what are um, the buyers looking for? What is what is their pain? What is the challenge? Mm. What is the price of doing nothing? What is the gain of facilitating change to them? Uh, what can they gain when they choose us from our, or what can they gain from, from mm -hmm. our solution? The marketing needs to have an understanding of that and they can only get that from sales. So they need to talk to each other right. because, and, and sales needs to tell them, listen, I need, I need to have these kinds of conversations. Yeah. How do we get these people to yeah. talk to us? And, you know, it, 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 it all happens when you, when you focus on demand generation rather than lead generation. Right. When, when right. you provide value, when you, when you let mm. your sales team go out mm. into social media, mm. not aggressively prospecting, mm -hmm. but adding mm -hmm. value, strategically adding value and promoting the brand, promoting the solution as well. So all of that together, it's, it's like a well-oiled machine that you have to right. build. Uh, and 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 we just I just love building that you know every, every kind of uh, little screw that yeah. that needs a little bit of oiling. Mm -hmm. um, but that's the beauty of it. it. It it really works beautifully. Right, right, right. So, what is the final message that you have for the sales people who are uh, you know watching this video currently? What is that message that you know who they are struggling, who are struggling to meet their KPIs? What message you would like to give out to them? My message would be, don't be afraid to ask. Don't be afraid to ask for help. If, if you feel that something feels off, mm. most of the time it is, mm. right? You have this gut feeling. You have, your instinct is telling you something is not right. Mm. And most of the time your, your instinct is right. Mm -hmm. um, so go out there and, and just accumulate or gather as, as much information as you can from outside the box, mm -hmm. um, talk to other sales leaders, sales managers, sales directors who have um, uh, different, uh, who have similar challenges, mm -hmm. maybe in different sectors, maybe in different regions, maybe in different different countries. Um, but it's so important to just ask for help. Go on LinkedIn. There's there's you know a, a lot of people out there mm -hmm. um, who show like like uh, Nelson for example and right. a bunch of other guys. Um, who just give insights into how it can be done differently mm -hmm. and better. Mm -hmm. um, and again, uh, just reach out to, to people who, who, seem to, um, who seem to resonate with, with you on, on, a personal, on a personal level. So go ask for help, definitely. Right. Yes, please go ask for help and don't be afraid. People are generally afraid of asking the questions nowadays. I don't know why. I mean, it's good if you are having doubt. That means you are interested into it. I, th I think you're absolutely right. It's 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 kind of um, especially when you when you're a man, you don't mm -hmm. like to ask for help. Okay. Uh, I don't know if that's <laughs> what kind of thing it is, but but you know, I, I talk to a lot of. Uh, friends and it's it's similar we don't even like to to ask for directions to to the restaurant or mm -hmm. we don't even like to do that uh now we have mm -hmm. responsibility over over a sales team of of 20 and mm -hmm. we don't know why it's not working so now you expect us to ask for help but that's the only way the, that's the only way that we can learn to to accept that something that we do it is isn't working Okay. And it's absolutely fine to admit that because that's the first step to change True. and True. to make it better mm -hmm. and, and, and to grow and scale that team and, and that business. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's absolutely, absolutely fine to admit that you have no idea right. and ask. Right. Definitely. Thank you so much, Joseph, for giving us your valuable time and coming on the show. Thank you very much for the invite. I really appreciate it. I, I had a very, very good time. Thank you so much for your questions and for having me. Definitely. Um, so the video, uh, the you know, interview is over, Joseph. Thank you so much again for giving your valuable time. And it was a fun collaboration, definitely. I get to learn yeah. a lot of things about salespeople, though. So <laughs> <laughs> it was a learning lesson for me. Yeah, it's kind of you know, I, I, I keep learning every day about, um, about mm -hmm. sales 
<laughs> the attitude and, and the mindset. Right. And um, I think the more we learn from each mm -hmm. other, the, the better we right. become as marketers, as, as salespeople, mm -hmm. as entrepreneurs, as, as business people. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I, again, I really appreciate um, you having me on, on this podcast, really enjoyed it. Uh, and really, really good question. So to appreciate it Thank you very right. much for that. Right. Um, also, you know, after this interview, I will send you an email uh, with a link to Fridvat form. If you are available or if, if it won't be, you know, longer than two, three minutes to fill in the form. If you can, it would be great help for us. If there is in any area of improvement, uh, you know, for the higher management thing, it would be great help if you can do it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, please do, do tag me on, on LinkedIn. Definitely. Or um anything i can do to help uh promote yeah. your podcast and and yes. that episode mm -hmm. uh, will, uh, i will i will can we know. tag uh, honeycomb and sales nation uh in the linkedin post as well um yeah so we have honeycomb uh honeycomb agency has a company page on linkedin yes um so sales nation as uh, as a podcast mm -hmm. so you will you do yeah. the the ad mm -hmm. um and sales nation it should appear as, uh, as yeah. a i've actually i've gone through your entire profile of honeycomb sales nation absolutely you know listen to all the podcast episode it was a good r and well you know while doing that entire r and i get to learn so much thing that we have pretty much of the guests also common in both the podcast as well yeah Awesome. Awesome. Now it, it is, I mean, it's, it's, for me, it's also great fun uh, to, to do that. And mm -hmm. it's, it's it, I, I said it to, to Nelson, it's, you know, in this podcast, it's not about me. It's just, mm -hmm. I just want to provide a, a platform for, mm -hmm. for like-minded people uh, mm -hmm. who go out there and uh, want to change the status quo right. in, in sales, just like I do. Mm -hmm. um, so I enjoy that very much. And it was a pleasant surprise to, to having received your uh, invitation to your podcast. So yeah, anything I can do, feel free to tag anything and, and everyone. Um, yeah. <laughs> anything i can do to right, help right. thank you so much and definitely i will let you know and thank you so much again for giving your valuable time see ya perfect thank you bye bye, bye. thank you so much guys for watching this video i hope you like it let me know in the comment section below what are the growth marketing hacks that you implemented in your organization that help to boost the sales also this podcast is available on spotify where you can listen it to anytime anywhere please subscribe to unbound official channel to get the daily update about the latest happening of the b2b world keep watching